This in my hand is the lightest and least dense solid in the entire world. It weighs virtually nothing. Some pieces can weigh just a singular gram. It's called aerogel and it's remarkably transparent and is one of the coolest materials I've ever seen. This video is all about aerogel, from how it's made, what it is, and the absurd things it can do. As the name suggests, aerogel is made up of mostly air. This piece is actually 96% air, and some aerogels can get up to 99.98% air. Some pieces can be so light that if you removed all the air from them, they would be less dense than air. This is why aerogel looks so transparent. One of the other remarkable things about aerogel is how great at insulating it is. This means that it is not good at allowing heat to pass through it. Here, I am doing an experiment to show this. First, we have to heat up this pan. Once it is hot enough, let's place this aerogel piece on top. You can see here how good the aerogel is at protecting my finger from getting burnt. The pan was far hotter than the aerogel, which just felt the same as when it's not heated. Aerogel is the best insulator on the planet. If you were to place some ice on a piece, which was on a plate, and heated that plate up to 80 degrees Celsius, the ice would still not melt. But why was such a material invented, and how was it made? Well, in 1931, scientist Samuel Kistler had a bet with his friend, Charles Leonard. The bet was about jelly. Yes. Jelly. The bet was this. Can you replace the liquid in jellies with gas without causing the jelly to shrink? The thing is, jellies are mostly a liquid, but also a solid, called a colloid. The actual skeleton of jelly is the structure that the liquid is embedded in. This is why they hold their shape and makes jelly bouncy. I knew freezing the liquid version of jelly makes it a solid, so I placed some jelly in the microwave, and this is what I got. Anyways, how did someone solve the bet? Well, if you simply get rid of the liquid using evaporation, the solid structure actually shrinks. This is because if you remove liquid molecules, they pull on the solid structure around them, so the jelly would just shrink. So Samuel Kistler fixed this problem, and he did it with a process called supercritical drying. He realized you could replace one liquid with another in the jelly. So, he did. He replaced the water with alcohol. Then, he pressurized it with a machine called an autoclave. That meant that the liquid part of the gel was now a semi-liquid, semi-gas, called a supercritical fluid. Now, you can no longer tell if the substance is a liquid or a gas. So those molecules are no longer pulling on each other. Once you depressurize, you are left with that solid skeleton which makes up for 1% of the mass of the aerogel. Except, now where there was liquid before, there is now gas. And what you're left with is aerogel. So aerogel is fireproof and incredibly transparent. But there's more. Normal aerogel is hydrophilic, meaning if it comes into contact with water or any other liquid, they absorb it and cause the aerogel to turn white and the structure to collapse. Because of aerogel's large surface area, due to the sponge-like structure the liquid is in, aerogel absorbs water quite well. It's almost like a maze the water has to get through. Just a 6 cm squared piece, if flattened out, would cover an entire football field. Aerogel's structure is also made out of chemical groups that attract water. This absorbing ability of aerogel allows for incredible things to happen. The people who made the case surrounding the Mona Lisa are interested to use aerogel for this instead. If the moisture inside increases, the aerogel would just absorb most of it. So this can be good, but also the exact opposite. 
Once you place aerogel in water, you can't turn it back into its previous state. So, scientists made hydrophobic aerogel, a type of aerogel that repels liquid. Watch what happens if I place this hydrophobic piece in some water. The aerogel repels this water, so it just drips right off. Just by replacing 30% of the absorbing chemical groups, or the OH groups, with some hydrophilic ones, creates this aerogel that perfectly repels water. This has some cool applications. For example, you can use this aerogel to completely waterproof yourself. You can do this by coating aerogel particles onto yourself. Another interesting quality of aerogel is its color. On a white background like this, it's almost invisible. You can barely make it out here. But on a darker background, you can see it's actually blue. This is because of Rayleigh scattering. When light enters our atmosphere, it will confront the molecules that are most abundant, so mostly oxygen and nitrogen. Light bounces from one molecule to another until it reaches us. If the wavelength of this light is shorter, it'll scatter more. Since blue is the shortest, it'll scatter the most. This is why the sky is blue. And aerogel also scatters light, according to Rayleigh scattering. Therefore, it is blue. Since aerogel happens to contain billions of internal surfaces, there will be sufficient enough Rayleigh scattering to change the colour of the light that passes through. This is why aerogel looks transparent in the infrared and opaque in the ultraviolet. So aerogel looks transparent on a white background and blue on a darker one. But what colour would this piece be if I held it up to the blue sky? Even bluer than it already is? Well, no, it would be yellow. This is because the aerogel is already scattering out the blue light, so passing through it are the longer wavelengths of light, like yellow. It's exactly like looking at a sunset. When you look at a sunset, the shorter wavelengths of light, like blue and violet, are scattered away, leaving the longer wavelengths to come through and reach our eyes. This is again Rayleigh scattering. So, when you hold aerogel, you are, in a very real way, looking at a piece of sky. Aerogel at first didn't find much practical applications. It was expensive and extremely brittle. But shortly after Kistler's death, some particle physicists were studying Cherenkov radiation. This is the radiation given off by charged particles when it travels through a material faster than light. Analyzing this radiation gives clues to the nature of the particle and therefore allows the scientists to know which invisible particle they're dealing with. This is where aerogel comes in. It is basically a solid version of gas and so it provides a material that the particle can travel through. NASA then followed. Aerogel began to be used to insulate equipment from extreme temperatures. Aerogel is also very light, useful for when you're launching a spacecraft out of the gravity of Earth. Aerogel was first used on the Mars Pathfinder in 1997 and has been used on every mission since. But then scientists realized that the material would be useful for something else. Determining exactly what a meteor is made up of has been of interest to us for many years. The problem is, these meteors are extremely hot, so NASA wondered if there was any way to capture some of these objects and bring them back to Earth. Well, meteors travel very fast, often reaching speeds of up to 18,000 kilometers per second. How could you catch that? What NASA needed was a way to slow the meteorite down without damaging it or the spacecraft. And aerogel is perfect for this job. It has a low density, so dust particles will be slowed down without being damaged, and it's transparent, so scientists can examine the specks of dust when they're inside. If the meteor was to hit a solid surface, they would just stop and vaporize. But not with aerogel. And so, in 1999, the Stardust spacecraft was launched, equipped 
with a tool that had lots of aerogel, and in the end, they found pristine samples of comet dust before the Earth even existed. Now, aerogel is extremely expensive. Some can actually be more than gold. So scientists have found ways to make it cheaper and usable. For example, materials infused with aerogel, like aerogel blankets. Some jackets even use aerogel to keep yourself warm. But why is aerogel so good at insulating? Well, that's because of its nanoscale pores. The width of the pores is smaller than the distance air molecules travel before colliding with something. So it's really hard for those hot moving molecules below the aerogel to get through to the top and transfer the heat there. It seems strange that such a transparent material is good at blocking the heat, but it is thanks to this effect called the Knudsen effect. Aerogels were created out of pure curiosity, ingenuity and wonder. In a world where we say we value such creativity and give out medals to reward its success, it's odd that we still use gold, silver and bronze to do so. If ever there was a material that represented humankind's ability to look up at the sky and wonder who we are, if ever there was a material that represented our ability to turn a rocky planet into a bountiful and marvellous place, if ever there was a material that represented our ability to explore the vastness of the solar system, while at the same time speaking of fragility of human existence, if ever there was a blue sky material, it is aerogel. Thanks to all my new subscribers. Subscribe to get a shout out here in my next video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Thank you.